Switch on the cutter and the water pump. The lower two switches on the gray control panel adjacent to the mast. The big red button is the emergency shutoff. If you need to shut the equipment down quickly in an emergency, hit this emergency stop button. That will shut down all hydraulic activity and return the hydraulic fluid back to the tank. To turn the system back on again, pull the button back out. Using the fast up-down control lever located on the mast next to the orbital control wheel, lower the drum to about two inches from the pavement. Turn on the water to the drum using the petcock just to the right of the pillow block. Halfway open is fine. The water should be flowing gently onto the road surface. Using the orbital control wheel, lower the rotating drum until it makes contact with the pavement and begins to core. You should note that every time you engage or release the hydraulics to lower or raise the drum using the fast up-down control lever or the orbital control wheel, the lockdown shoes on the stabilizer ring will automatically engage or release. Occasionally, this might not happen automatically due to a minor hydraulic lock, but a quick touch of the fast up-down control lever will rectify the situation. At this point in time, before the coring drum actually fully seats itself into the pavement and channels the lubricating and cooling water from inside the drum into the kerf or cut, it is a good idea to supplement the water flow by spraying the cutting edge of the drum with the auxiliary hose. Once the drum is seated, the internal water flow will be sufficient to cool and lubricate the drum. On asphalt surface roads, as soon as the coring drum has scored the pavement, Raise the drum and slide in the pavement protection impact plate. If the core delaminates or becomes stuck in the drum and you have to use a pry bar through the access holes in the top of the drum to try and dislodge it, this plate will protect the pavement surface from damage. Check to make sure that it is centered on the core and will not interfere with the pilot bit. You can now resume coring. It's a good idea, after lowering the drum to resume coring, to glance over at the lockdown shoes on the stabilizer ring to ensure that they have re-engaged. If they have not, a quick tap on the fast up-down control lever in the down direction will re-engage them. When coring, the down pressure gauge, which is on the left of the instrument cluster, should read about 800 PSI. Don't try and force the drum down. Too much down pressure can cause the drum to bind. It will also increase the wear on the teeth or damage them. Maintain a constant pressure of around 800 PSI and let the teeth on the coring drum do their job. Slow and steady is the best method. Periodically, during the coring process, it is a good idea to wind the drum up and down. This helps clear coring debris out of the kerf. If you do not know how thick the pavement is, a good indicator that you may be through will be a change in color of the slurry water and a change in the sound of the coring process as the pilot bit and drum begin to cut into the granular base below the pavement. You should also remember that the pilot bit extends beyond the bottom of the coring drum and will penetrate the sub base sooner than the drum. You will need to core an inch or two more before the pavement is completely cored through all around. You should also remember that the bottom of the pavement may be irregular or not perfectly flat or uniform. That is, it may be thicker on one side than the other. To see if you are actually through all around before you move the coring mast out of the way, it is always a good idea to see if the core is loose using a small pry bar or other tool. Once you are through, you can raise the drum, turn off the cutter and the water supply. Using the control pendant, swing the coring mast out of the way. Using a pry bar inserted in the pilot hole, gently break the suction on the core by rocking it back and forth. Before removing the core, clean up the slurry around the site using the pressure washer. Recover the pavement protection plate and stow it away. It's a good idea once you have the power washer out to wash off the slurry spray from the coring unit as well. Turn off the pressure washer and disconnect the hose. You are now ready to remove the core from the pavement. It is now that you will appreciate the real value of the central pilot hole that distinguishes the Utilicore coring process from all other coring processes. The ease with which you can lift the core from the road. To extract the core from a Utilicore cored hole, simply insert the core puller into the pilot hole. Twist the horizontal bar to compress and expand the rubber cylinder at the bottom and lift the core out of the pavement. 
A typical five or six inch core will weigh between 80 and 90 pounds. For heavier cores over seven inches deep, it is a good idea to share the weight with a partner using a pry bar through the ring at the top. Remember to bend your knees and then lift the core out of the pavement and set it aside. For deeper and heavier cores, a 15 inch deep core can weigh as much as 250 pounds. You should use the core hoist at the end of the boom. It has a lift capacity of 2,000 pounds. Just insert the core puller as before and, using the boom control pendant, position the hoist over the core. Lock down the boom, connect the hoist control pendant, and slide the hoist along the track until it is positioned directly over the core puller. Attach the safety hook to the ring of the core puller and raise the core with the hoist and swing it out of the way by rotating the boom with the boom control pendant. Disconnect the hoist cable. Return the hoist to its secure and locked travel position and disconnect and stow the hoist control pendant in the under deck storage locker on the driver's side. After checking that there are no obstructions in the way, you can now swing the coring boom around to its at rest or stowed position ready for travel. When the boom has reached the proper spot, the automatic boom limit switch will shut off the power to end the rotation. Using the coring control pendant, raise the stabilizers to the travel position. Stow the pendant and lock the boom down. The coring part of the operation is complete. If the vacuum excavation or repair work is not ready to be performed at this time, cover the hole with the circular road plate and move the core to a safe place on the side of the road.